Hi folks, Doyle Dogs here. Welcome to my Sunday string along. And I'll be stringing along today with a couple of guitars. My beautiful Godan guitar as well as a fair amount. And also a sand guitar. How about a little something for my mom? She's 97 years old, and uh, that one. <laughs> Sounds like Woody Woodpecker or something. <laughs> oh, I wrote that for my mom uh, years ago, and uh, man, I tell you what, mom, you've been a blessing, been a blessing. And uh, I just wanted to uh, uh, share some things here today.
<laughs> oh, I just had to do something a little patriotic here uh, this weekend, you know, uh, ex election week and everything. And if you haven't voted yet, you uh, exercise that freedom and that right uh, that you have and, uh, and go vote. And that's a great thing. This is a great little guitar. I tell you what, as Leo Matheny told me about a year ago before he passed away, I was playing this guitar for him and and he said, Doyle, that's all the guitar you ever need right there. <laughs> I sure miss him and uh, what a wonderful, you know, I, I, I know life goes on, but life doesn't always stay the same. You know, th my son said today, one thing inevitable is change and uh, change takes place and and that's just part of life and I sure miss him and also Virginia Leo Virginia Bethany we have a lot of friends you know that have been uh, commenting on the program as well and you know when a guy had to have heart surgery and we have people that have had uh, been diagnosed now with cancer uh, just got a note from a very good friend of mine today that his wife is and had to keep her in the hospital and uh, Pray, uh, so pray for them and uh, in fact her name is Deed and uh, I had to go back and look at all the comments to get all the names but we have people if you will if you haven't yet read some of the comments on the, the string along please go back and do that yeah, some very very meaningful things that you folks have said to me but also there are prayer requests there too so pray for those folks and we love you we pray for you all the time every day just believe God to bless your life and and for those that need healing, Lord, we just pray for healing and a special touch here today. No matter where they are right now, you're, you're there with them. There's no distance in the spirit. We just thank you for that right now in Jesus' name. Thought I'd take my saying guitar and play something on this as one of my favorite guitars and uh, miss Kirk Sand too. And we lost him this year. <laughs>
uh, sure miss Kirk, and he built this beautiful guitar, and uh, it's it's uh, hollow actually. I mean, you could even turn. <laughs> and this is outside, folks. Isn't that amazing? One of those men that was just gifted of the Lord, as well as Robert Godin and uh, all those guys. Um, we're working on some guitars and things together, you know. Part of life that I enjoy, you know, there, there's some things in life the Lord just, I love guitars, you know, but I don't worship guitars, you know, I worship the Lord. And so I'm, I'm thankful for even being able to do this, you know, I'm just so thankful to be able to use my gift. But I want to use it for Him, and I want to use it wisely, as wisely as I can. And a lot of you have been a part of that, and I, it's a good time for a commercial here, folks, I guess, but you've been a part of this for a long time. Since some of you have been uh, commenting since, since the day I started this, the Sunday string along. So anyway, we have uh, caps, and uh, this, people say, how can we support you? This is one way. We have Sunday string along caps. And we have a brand new guitar pour cap that just came out. We had so many great comments on this one and uh, Sunday String Along that we decided to do the guitar, the new guitar pour caps the same way. And the trucker cap, I believe they call that. And uh, anyway, it's, it's been a blessing. Well, hello there, little E. What in the world are you doing here? Yeah, you want to come here? You want, you want the people to see you? <laughs> oh, look at that. This is little E. <laughs> That's what I call her. Mm. She is my buddy, little Egypt. And uh, she's a blessing. She really is. I don't know what I'd do without her. And uh, remember that uh, that song? My, my brother-in-law named her that. But anyway, <laughs> little Egypt. I call her little E, or we just call her Egypt most of the time. But uh, Egypt was once my, I always say, Egypt was once my dog. I was her slave. I mean, <laughs> oh, man. By the way, speaking to that song, all right, run along. Here you go. Uh, we were with Paul Wilson uh, from the, uh, uh, I always say the flying pig, the blind pig and the acorn. And we're going to be on his program, Paul Wilson, the blind pig and the acorn so go to that on youtube the blind pig and the acorn all this month uh they just came out with a video yesterday my son caleb and i are playing on this uh, uh and he has train songs every week comes out every saturday morning at 10 o'clock i said man that sounds just like the the roy rogers show <laughs> every saturday morning at 10 o'clock he was he wasn't quite old enough to know what that was i guess but uh Anyway, wonderful guy, and I, I said, man, you're, you're my new favorite, I mean, the guy can really sing, so we really appreciate that, and, and he totally approved of this, and he had that on, on all the videos, so we have a new song coming out every Saturday, so we have t-shirts, and the Sunday string along, and uh, just a lot of different things, folks, and we appreciate your support there, and we have some orange ones that just came out, too. And uh, on the Sunday, just very simple Sunday string along. We have a lot of music you can download on, on your favorite, whatever, iTunes, or uh, you can go to Amazon and find our music. And uh, you can even say, Alexa, play Doyle Dykes, and uh, she'll play it. <laughs> and so, But you can download a lot of it, and also you can buy her if you just go to DoyleDykes.com, and that would be a, a real blessing to us. So uh, once again, the, the Blind Pig and the Acorn, every Saturday of November will be on that. And uh, we've been watching uh, his sister, Tipper Presley, and, uh, and also the Presley Girls, and they have a YouTube channel uh, called Celebrating Appalachia is hers, and the other one is the Presley Girls. So support them as well. They're wonderful people. Uh, I just wanted to share some things, though, uh, from my heart. Uh, in Mark chapter 10, this is in the King James Version. And when he was gone forth into the way, there came one running, came one running. Billy Graham even said, I was impressed that he was running towards Jesus. He ran to him. And uh, most people of prominence and wealth, they don't run. You know, it's too, they're too good for that. But he came running and kneeled to him. And he, and he asked him, good masters, what he said, good master." What shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? He wanted eternal life. He had everything else. You know, there's one thing pretty much everybody in the world would want. I think everybody that I know of 
Uh, I know every uh, uh, everyone I've ever met in my whole life would love to go to heaven. They want they want eternal life, you know. And some people even they're even agnostics. If they don't believe it, they wish there was. You know, what can I do to to gain eternal life? He had everything else. Jesus said, "Why call us thou me good?" So that was the first thing Jesus called. Why do you call me good? There's none good but one, and that is God. Was he saying that he wasn't good, putting himself down? No. He was actually tempting him, or testing him, rather, not tempting, but he was testing him, saying, do you believe I'm God? Are you saying that because you believe I'm God, that I'm Christ, the Son of God? Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do, and he said, do, defraud not. Honor thy father and thy mother. And he answered and said to him, Master, all these things I have observed from my youth. And then Jesus said, Beholding him, he loved him. Now notice, he loved the young man. He loved him. And then he said to him, One thing thou lackest, one thing, just one thing. Go thy way and sell whatsoever thou hast and give to the poor. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come and take up the cross and follow me. And that was just much too much for him. He was sad at that saying. You know, I don't think there's anyone else in the Bible, anywhere else that I, that I have ever seen or heard uh, that anyone ran to Jesus or came to Jesus and left sorrowful. He's the only one. Uh, all the others left glad or happy, except for this one. When he wanted something from him and then he walked away sad at that saying and he went away grieved for he had great possessions. He had great possessions, and then Jesus looked round about, and he said to his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? Disciples were astonished at his words, but Jesus answered again, and he said, Children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches? Yes, not trust in God, but trust in riches. And that means to seek and obey. Trust means to seek and obey. How hard is it for those that seek and obey it riches? to enter into the kingdom of God. It is easy, easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, well, who then can be saved? And Jesus looking upon them, he said, well, with men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are possible. In other words, because of the grace of God, the grace of God can do it. You know, and uh, if you read in Galatians and all throughout Paul's teaching, he went, you know, comparing grace and the law. And uh, they, they're not against each other, but they actually complement each other. Through the law, we understand absolutes, what is right and what is wrong. But we also know, you know, the Bible says that if you uh, actually try to keep the law and you mess up in one place, just in one place, he said, you've blown the whole thing. You've blown everything. And, uh, and that's, you know, in other words, it's impossible to, to keep the law. It's imp on our own. And we had to have someone to pay the price for sin. First of all, you've got to know he was a rich, young ruler. He was very wealthy. He was a ruler, no doubt, over a synagogue or something. He had prominence and wealth, but he also had influence in that area. E. Stanley Jones said there's two ways to be rich. One is the abundance of your possessions and the other in the fewness of your wants. <laughs> Let me read that again. There are two ways to be rich. One in the abundance of your possessions, but the other in the fewness of your wants. So no doubt in the Jew Jewish community, he had power and he had influence. He ran to Jesus, good teacher. And Jesus said only one thing, just one thing. What would be that one thing to you? Now, for him, it was, it was wealth, but it may not be that for you at all. It may be something else. But this Jesus knew, and he, he felt genuine love for this young man, the Bible says. Well, everybody thinks here this, well, it was the money that caused you, you know, him not to believe, and he walked away sorrowful. And money is the root of all evil. No, it isn't. The lust of money is the root of all evil. And 1 Timothy 6 and 10, for the love of money, not money itself, but the love of money. If you look at that word, it, it really comes from a word, eros, which is wor worldly love or lust. The lust of money is the root of all evil. 
And, and uh, the Message Bible says, lust for money brings trouble and nothing but trouble. And going down that path, some lose their footing in the faith completely and live at, to regret it bitterly ever after. Bitter, that means forever. The one thing he wanted was eternal life, and he turned it down because of worldly riches. He ran to Jesus, and can you believe, the Bible says in, in Proverbs 18 and 10, for the, the name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run to it, and they are saved. They runneth into it, and they are saved. They are saved. He just couldn't see that, that, that you know, he ran to Jesus. Jesus said, just give it all away and, and surrender. That's the one thing. He says, surrender it all. And he said, and then come follow me. Can you imagine he turned that down? Oh, my goodness. Well, and So he wanted eternal life. And our, our government can't give you that. I mean, we have an election this week. Don't count on the president, any president, giving you eternal life. You know, not, there's not a government in the world. That's why Jesus is king of kings, lord of lords. And he's the only one that can. James 2 and 10, for whosoever uh, keeps the, the whole Ten Commandments or the law but fails in one point, that's what I was looking for a while ago, has become guilty of all of it. In fact, Jesus said, you don't even have to do it. You just have to think evil, think lustful things in your life. Or if you uh, want to commit ad adultery with a, 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 another person, it just by thinking that, you've already done it in your heart. So it goes way deeper than anything we could ever handle. Jesus, paid, that's why we have grace. And he called out murder, he called out adultery, theft, lying, you know, cheating and respecting. Or he, he left, but he left out one other thing, and that was the one thing that he was focusing on. He left out covet, uh, to covet, covetousness. And, and he said, thou shalt not covet. And that was the one thing this young man had uh, in his life. He, he coveted riches. He wanted more. The definition means eager or excessive desire, especially for wealth or possessions or power. And uh, the Webster's Dictionary says having a craving or, a pos or, or for possession. A craving for possession. And uh, you can have, I want to tell you something, you can have a lot in this world. There is so much you can have in this world. And so let me tell you something. Uh, you've heard the story about me. Uh, walking out of the time I was going to meet Elvis, I was in the next room. I was with a J.D. Sumner Stamps Quartet, and they had me all primed up and told Elvis, and, and uh, he said, man, we have a new guitar player, and he's gospel music, and, and they said, man, we're going to just spend all night, you know. And to make a long story short, the Spirit of God just got a hold of me. And that wouldn't have been a sin for anybody else. Just like money's not a sin for everybody, but it, that, it was that covetousness that kept him. It was a sin for him. And uh, so, I mean, I know wealthy people. There's a man, I was out working in my yard. He come, hey, Dole, how are you doing? You know, what are you doing out here? And I said, well, sir. And, and he owns the life care behind me. He's worth over $2 billion. He's a wonderful guy. And uh, I, I started asking, could you pay for a lawn man to come over and help me with my sprinklers? <laughs> but no, he's actually a wonderful guy. There's another a guy I know. I mean, a couple of people I know in Nashville. I mean, their car barns are bigger than most churches, a lot of churches I go in. And uh, they have like 200 cars. And uh, But you know what? They love Jesus and they give. Uh, I remember when I was in the room next door, I was going to meet Elvis and a few, and, I, and it's like I had a vision, and it's just like just for me that night. And uh, it may not have affected me any other time like it did then, but it was like God say, "What king are you are you going to serve? Which king are you?" And on one side, I, I could see Elvis dripping with diamonds and jewelry, you know. And I'm not saying he was wrong. I'm not saying he was bad or anything, but I'm just saying the the spirit of the Lord moved on me. Which king will you serve? Which king will you play for? And, and, and I just shut my eyes, and I just sat there in a chair. And on the other side, I saw Jesus with both of his hands outstretched, who died on the cross for me. You know, what would you trade that for? What would you trade for that? There are a lot of people that have wealth in this life. I mean, let me tell you, I wrote a few stats down. If I'm 70 years old, so if the day I was born, I... I uh, say I earned three hundred thousand dollars per day from the day I was born 70 years old and and so three hundred thousand dollars a day I earned 
you know, and I saved every dime of it. $300,000 a day, seven days a week. That's $210 million a week for 70 years. Still, President Trump is worth $400 million more than that. Can you imagine that? And, and, uh, it, it, and, okay, let's look at him. Let's look at, we're just not picking on anybody, but President Trump. Okay, his wealth went from $4 billion one month, I think September, to October to $8 billion because of stocks and all this kind of stuff. But let's just listen to this. This is how much wealth there is in this life. You don't think there's wealth? Look at this. If President Trump, since the time of Jesus was born, okay, uh, 738,000 days. Okay, if he had, if he earned $10,000 per day, $10,000 a day since the time of Christ that he was born, that would be uh, $600 million less than what President Trump is worth today. I mean, just think about that. There's so much. All right, here's one, that, here's a couple others that'll blow your mind. Listen, this is amazing. If you earn $250,000 a day since the day Jesus was born, every day, Jeff Bezos is still richer by $2 billion than you would be. Can you imagine that? Okay, here's another one even bigger. If you earn $350,000 per day since Jesus, the day that Jesus, from the day Jesus was born, $350,000 a day until now. Elon Musk is still $11 billion, and, and that's way more than Trump's worth. He's still $11 billion richer than that. You, can't, you don't think you can amass great riches in this world? You don't think you can build up riches? I mean, there... Uh, it, exponentially, I don't know how it works. I can't even think about things like that. Not interested in thinking that much about it. However, I just want you to know, there are people that are wealthy in this life. How hard is it for a wealthy person to go to heaven if he trusts in those riches? I mean, if you think about this, wealth, I, you know, I've, I've known people, that's, oh, yeah, I used to say to my kids, Oh yeah, they got a house in Florida. They got a house in, in Los Angeles, and they have in Hollywood. They have a house in Colorado. They have houses in, in the islands in Hawaii, and and uh, and they have cars. They have all the wealth you can imagine, and and they're they're famous, wealthy. Do you think they're happy? You doggone right they are, <laughs> and that's the problem. See, because people get happy and they think they're good and they may even give that something to the poor but have they really surrendered their hearts to the Lord that's the difference wealth is not a sin having wealth but it's, it's, the, it's when the wealth has you and, and Tony Campolo he used to be one of my favorite preachers you know, for a long time ago I hadn't even thought of him but I found this quote there's nothing wrong with making a lot of money there, money there's nothing wrong with making a lot of money but there's something wrong with keeping it. <laughs> and so, you know, this one other thing that Jesus was talking about is surrendering your heart and your life to the Lord. Surrender it to him. What is the one thing that could keep you from eternal life? What would be the thing that you just say, well, I just can't do that? And you bow your head and you'd walk away. It may not be that. It may be something totally different. It, you know what? It may be unforgiveness against someone else. It may be holding harsh resentment against your parents. It could be anything else. Don't let it be anything else. You know, I heard uh, one time uh, from my friend Jeff Shreve. I was listening to him preach. Jeff Shreve, First Baptist Church, Texarkana. Every day you can hear him on the family, Christian Family Radio. He's one of my favorite people as well. Just a wonderful guy. And he said, Adrian Rogers said, you know, if someone offered you, say, a billion dollars, a billion dollars, if you would uh, just renounce Christ for one day, if if said, okay, if you say, I'm not a Christian, I'll, I'll renounce Christ for one day for a billion dollars, would you do it? 
And he said, well, you know, for, uh, for one thing, there are three, three reasons that you shouldn't. Number one, you may die <laughs> in, during that one day, and it'd be, you'd be lost. You would not have eternal life. Number two, Jesus could come back because he promised that he will. But number three, he said, having Jesus in your life for one day is worth all the wealth of this world. And that's the truth. I want to sing this old song, and I know you probably know it. Uh, George Beverly Shea used to sing this. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather be His than have riches untold. or more <laughs> not in your life father god thank you for this message today and whatever that one thing may be that would keep anybody from eternal life let them surrender that to you lord it may be unforgiveness it may be, may be bitterness it may be holding on to things other things and vices in their life and if they know inside in their heart that it's a sin i pray that they will let it go let it go today in Jesus' name. Surrender to you. Say, Lord, forgive me of this sin in my life. I don't want anything to block the flow of, your, of, of eternal life and of your power and your spirit, not even for one day in my life. Forgive me of my sins. I accept you as Lord of my life. Accept me right where I am today in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God, I'm rich beyond compare. I'm sorry, folks. I was trying to think of this whole song my friend Benny Triplett wrote. I'm rich in faith and hope and love more than my share. My father owns a universe and I'm his heir. He's building me a heavenly home that's free of care. Praise God, I'm rich beyond compare. Praise God, I'm rich. get in your way of eternal life. God bless you folks. Thanks for joining me on my Sunday string along.